Hey everyone, we're going to take a look at encrypting and decrypting data using the Go programming language. Um, so what we can actually do is we can make use of the Go crypto library, uh, which will handle all of the heavy lifting for us. So I do have my terminal up, I have Go installed, and I'm already in my Go path. Um, so what we want to do is we want to create a new project. I'm going to call this crypto project, and I'm going to navigate into it. After that, I'm going to create a new project file. You can really call this whatever you want and create it however you want, uh, but I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to call it main.go. After that, I'm going to open up this main.go file in an IDE of my choice. So I'm going to use Atom by GitHub. You can use whatever you want as an IDE. Uh, please do note that I am using some plugins for this editor, uh, which will uh, do a lot of autocomplete for me. Um, but beyond that, it doesn't do anything special. So go ahead and open up that main.go file. What we want to do is we're going to create a encrypt function, decrypt function, and then we're going to create some functions for encrypting and decrypting files. Now when it comes to encryption, uh, you're required to use a key uh, for your cipher. Uh, the problem with this is your key cannot be just a plain passphrase. It has to be of a certain length, uh, byte length. Uh, lucky for us, what we can do is that we can actually take a passphrase and we can hash it into uh, something of the correct length. Um, so th those libraries are also available as part of the crypto library. Um, so let's go ahead and start things off. We're going to say package main. Uh, we're going to say function main. That's going to be our driving function. And we're going to create that hashing function, which will allow us to take a passphrase and turn it into a hexadecimal value. So let's go ahead and say function. We're going to say create hash. Uh, we're going to provide it a key, so a passphrase. It's going to be of type string, and it's going to return a string. We're going to say hasher equals MD5. So we're just going to use a simple MD5 hash. doesn't really matter how we hash it. It just needs to be the correct length um, because we will be using encryption, and we will not be storing the key inside of the encrypted data itself. So we're going to say dot new. We're going to say hasher dot write, and we're going to write byte, uh, so a byte slice, uh, as as the key, the string. Finally, well, what we want to return is we want to return that hexadecimal hash. So we're going to say return, and we're going to say hex dot encode to string, and we're going to use that the source bytes. Uh, but what we actually want to do is we want to sum them up. So we want to say hasher dot sum nil. And if you're curious on what all of this does, it is inside of the crypto documentation for uh, Go. So it's it's in the official documentation. Um, I've just separated and cleaned it up into um, its own separate hashing function. So that way it makes our lives a little easier. The next step is, well, we have no data yet, so we probably want to encrypt something. So let's go ahead and create a function called encrypt. What we're doing is we're going to encrypt some kind of data, and it's going to be a slice of byte. Um, so we're not we're not narrowing this down to strictly strings. It could be any byte data, um, which is useful when it comes to files as well. Um, but the next thing is going to be our passphrase, and that's going to be of type string. And the response is going to be a byte slice. Now, uh, the first thing we got to do inside of this encrypt function is we have to create a new cipher. So what we can say is we can say block, and I'm actually going to ignore the errors. I'll explain what all of the errors are. But I'm going to ignore them for this example. So uh, we're going to ignore that. And we're going to say AES. Uh, so we're going to create a new AES cipher. We're going to say new cipher. Um, it's going to be a byte slice of our hash. So remember, we're returning a string. And I could easily have returned a, a slice of byte instead of a string. Um, but we're going to say create hash. And we're going to pass in our passphrase. Now the error in this case, well, maybe our hash, when we create our cipher, maybe that it's of the incorrect byte length. Um, that would cause an error to be thrown. There's probably other ways that would throw errors as well, um, but we'll ignore those for now. Um, next, we want to create a new GCM. So a GCM is a Galios counter mode. Um, so this is useful when it comes to helping us encrypt. So let's say GCM. Uh, we're going to, again, ignore the error. We're going to say cipher dot new GCM, and we're going to pass that block in, the cipher block. Again, we're ignoring the error. 
Uh, the next step is we want to create a nonce. So this would be some kind of uni unique value. Um, and we're going to say nonce. And I, I'm pretty sure other people call it other things. But um, for me, I'm just going to call it nonce. I don't, I don't know the correct pronunciation of it. Equals make byte gcm dot nonce size. So there is a specific nonce size uh, for GCM, and this is going to be valuable when it comes to decryption as well. Um, but we're going to say io dot read full uh, for our reader. We're going to say rand dot reader, and we're going to use that nonce. So what's happening here? Um, and we could pass in an error as well um, as far as a response. But what we're saying is we're going to uh, take some random values and we're going to read it into this variable this um, of slice byte. Um, so uh, it's, again, a defined size, but with random data in it. And you definitely want it to be random for every kind of uh, encryption step that you take. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say ciphertext equals, and this is where the encryption actually happens, we're going to say gcm.seal. Now, something weird here. So when it comes to the actual encryption, um, the same nonce that was used to encrypt needs to be used to decrypt. Uh, there's two, two probably best ways to accomplish this. One way is if you're going to store the encrypted data, and store, store it with the nonce as a separate uh, column or property uh, with that data. The other way is to prefix it to your encrypted data, which is what we're going to do. So um, everything's bundled in all at once. You just have to remember the size of that, of that nonce prefix. So in our case, we're going to say uh, nonce uh, for the prefix. We're going to actually use the nonce uh, value for uh, encryption. We're going to pass in our data, and then we're going to pass in nil. And we're going to return ciphertext. Now let's go ahead and give it a try. And, and make sure that everything works here. So we're going to say ciphertext equals encrypt. Uh, for our data, we're going to say a byte slice, and we're going to say hello world. And for the passphrase, we're going to use password. We're going to then print it out. We're going to say uh, fmt.println. We're going to say ciphertext, and we're going to see what we get at this point. So I'm going to open up my terminal. I'm going to say go run uh, our go files. Uh, this time it, it passed out a buffer, what it looks like. So let's instead of that, let's go ahead and wrap it as a string. Um, and we'll see what we get as a string value instead. So let's try to run it again. Uh, this time we get a lot of garbled randomness. Uh, but in theory, if we try to decrypt this using the next step, it'll say hello world. So this is not something that would be easily decryptable because it's using an AS cipher. So let's go ahead and move on to that next step here. We're going to we're going to worry about decryption and in reality it's it's almost the same as as encryption. So we're going to say function decrypt as far as what we pass is we're going to pass in data and that's going to be a byte slice and we're going to have a passphrase string and it's going to return a byte slice. Uh, similar steps are going to happen, so we're going to say key equals, this is going to be a uh, byte slice, and we're going to say create hash, passphrase, and then we're going to say block, we're going to ignore the error, and, and in, the, in the previous encryption step, I combined that all in one line, but we're going to say uh, equals aes dot new cipher, we're going to pass in that key, we're going to do the GCM step again. We're going to ignore the error, cipher.newGCM, block. Um, the next step is instead of generating a nonce string, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take it off of the prefix. Um, but before we do that, we need to figure out the, the nonce size. So we're going to say uh, nonce size equals gcm.nonce size. Um, and we're going to be using that um, to get it off of uh, of our ciphertext. So we're going to say nonce uh, and then ciphertext. So we're splitting it up uh, because it's not, we can't really decrypt it um, with the nonce attached as the prefix. So we're going to say data. Um, so we're going to say nonce size. So this is the nonce. So everything um, 
up until that nonce size. So, so position zero up until nonce size. And then we're going to say data, nonce size, and then everything after nonce size. So everything after nonce size is going to be the ciphertext. Everything before is going to be the actual uh, nonce. Uh, next up, we're going to say plain text. And we're going to ignore the error. And we're going to say GCM dot open instead of seal. We're going to pass in nil. We're going to pass in our nonce that we've extracted, the ciphertext, and nil. And now if we return it, return that plain text, it should hopefully be uh, what we're after. Um, and we're going to try that. So when we try to run it, what we're going to do is we're going to say plain text equals decrypt for the data it's going to be uh, ciphertext. For the password, it's going to be password. And then we're going to say fmt.println. Uh, let's go ahead and say, because we're, we're returning a slice of byte, we're going to say string. Save it, and then hopefully it runs. So let's go ahead and run it. Um, so we've got some randomness as our ciphertext and then it was able to decrypt it again into hello world which is exactly what we wanted um, so the next step is well now that we've encrypted and decrypted basically strings um, maybe we want to encrypt and decrypt files um, so we can actually create functions that kind of wrap these encrypt and decrypt functions that we had already created uh, so let's start with encrypt so we're going to say function uh, encrypt file let's go ahead and give it a file name and that's going to be a string. We're going to say uh, data is going to be a slice of byte. And then the passphrase is once again a string. And we're not going to return anything this time. So we need to create a file based off of our file name. So we're going to say uh, f for file. We're going to ignore that error. We're going to say os.create file name. And that's going to create a file for us. When we're done, we're going to say defer f.close. So we're going to close that file when we're done. Then we're going to say f.write encrypt data passphrase. Um, so remember, encrypt returns us a byte, or byte slice, um, which is what file write requires. So essentially, we're just, we're just passing it through the pipe. All right. So before we actually do the encrypt and decrypt, let's go ahead and uh, get that decrypt file function in there. So let's say function, we're gonna say decrypt file. We're gonna say file name, string, uh, data. This time we're not gonna have data. Passphrase, string, and we're gonna return a byte slice because this is our plain text. All right, so we're gonna say data, ignore the error, equals io util, dot read file we're going to pass it in that file name then we're going to say return decrypt the data that was returned because it's already a slice of byte passphrase and save it so if we want to run it uh, we can go back into our main driver function here um, and let's go ahead and say something like encrypt file and we'll say example dot text uh, as far as the data that we're going to encrypt, we're going to say uh, a byte slice. We're going to say hello world again. And the passphrase is going to be password. Then if we wanted to, we can say, uh, let's say P, we'll just rename it something. We'll just call it the same thing. Plain text equals, and we'll say decrypt file. The file name is example.text. And the passphrase is password. And we're going to print it out. So let's just copy and paste. All right, with a little bit of luck, uh, this should create a file as well as do everything we had done previously. So I ran it. Uh, so it created this file example.txt. And if I open it, uh, there's a lot of nonsense in it, uh, which is good. No one's gonna be able to decrypt that unless they've got a very powerful quantum computer, I would assume. Um, so the, the example text file is there and it was able to decrypt it 
um, and it printed out hello world. So everything worked as planned. Uh, let's go ahead and just do a rehash uh, on what happened here. This is um, encryption and decryption with Go. Um, so first of all, we did need to create our own hash function because we cannot use just a plain text passphrase when it comes to creating a new cipher. Uh, there are certain requirements as far as the, the length. So we did create an MD5 hash, which was appropriate length of our passphrase. Uh, we created a new cipher. Uh, we figured out our nonce. And again, I apologize if I'm saying it incorrectly. Uh, but this is of random data. Uh, we prefixed that nonce to our encrypted data. And then when it came to decryption, we set it up the same, but we extracted the nonce. Uh, well, rather than extracted, I'm going to say we separated the nonce from the ciphertext, which allowed us to then decrypt. Uh, when it came to encryption and decryption, uh, we essentially just took that encrypted data or decrypted data uh, from the file. So it didn't really add anything else to what we've already done, um, but it did like mobilize it into uh, actual file data. Uh, so pretty interesting stuff. Uh, it wasn't so difficult, um, but it could be very powerful. And if, if you know of a better way to implement anything that I've done, I encourage you to respond in the comments because I am by no means a security expert um, and there are probably way better ways to do things than I have demonstrated.